BMW versus Mercedes. It's the clash of the ages. We have some epic rivalries. 7 Series versus S Class, C63 versus M4, and the list just goes on and on and on. And today we bring to you another epic rivalry, but from the bottom of the pick. That is the most accessible BMW SUV, the X1. And this is the most accessible Mercedes SUV, the GLA. Which one is better? Let's find out. Stay tuned because the result is going to be very surprising. So we've already done a review of the GLA 220D, that also in its 4MATIC variant, which comes with all-wheel drive. But uh, if you want to check that out, hit the I button right here and uh, apart from that the looks in this car are quite subtle it's quite got quite a lot of curves and the body cladding is uh, not matched in its body color so that it looks a little more rugged what do you think so um, I think it's a decent looking car I think so the 4MATIC variant gets more aggressive bumpers like it gets the AMG bumpers it gets the fancier AMG wheels and overall it's just a more aggressive car this on the other hand it looks a little plain Jane but again it's a very colour dependent car For sure I think the black and white look rather simple But they come in two other colours I don't remember That look fantastic The grey one Yep And uh, the blue one Yep The deep the blue, blue one looks blue. really nice But what I don't like about Mercedes And it, I mean they're just not stopping Is the fakery that they're doing Like for example The front bumper over here Like this is fake Whereas if you look at in the X1 uh, It has some real air vents Even at the back the diffuser is fake, the exhaust tips are fake BMW has just completely removed that It's just like a diffuser style looking thing But I think so Like in terms of fakery This wins I mean in terms of more fake holes or whatever Yeah but Maybe Yeah But so. what I also like would like to say is that Weirdly this in terms of dimensions is 500mm shorter In terms of length yep. Overall length Yup yup So that's 4500mm if I'm not wrong and this is 4436mm and you can definitely see that because that definitely is the bigger car I mean it looks massive in front of this but the weirdest thing about the GLA is that it actually has the longer wheelbase of the two even though that is the longer car in general the wheelbase is longer, 2729mm versus 26 something I can't remember but uh, roughly 30mm 30 30 mm difference yeah but I think so the X1 is still the more spacious car This still, still feels like a hatchback inside to an extent in, but in terms of spaciousness The X1 being newer uh, I think it's developed from a platform that needed to fit An electric uh, platform yeah. as well as an ICE platform Now enough of the GLA Let's talk about the new boy in town Yeah, The X1 In front in my opinion, it looks fantastic. I really like the bumper and uh, yeah, in terms of looks, the X1 looks so much better than the outgoing version. But uh, I think that's because it only comes in M Sport now. Yeah, I think so. BMW has completely stopped selling like a normal X1. You can only get the M Sport trim now, which is very cool because uh, the thing is, the GLA 220D in that particular spec is like 50 lakhs X showroom This is 52.5 So it's a pretty fair comparison Both are top of the line front wheel drive Premium crossover SUV things And the GLA like, I, like we said gets the 4MATIC variant That's only 20,000 rupees more expensive than this So that's totally up to you Would you like a 4MATIC GLA or would you like an X1 Which looks pretty cool And I have to agree with you on this Looks pretty cool, I love the paint uh, looks, I'm kind of divided, I'm anyways not a big fan of SUVs or premium crossovers or whatever But at least they haven't done some stupid stuff with the grill It's a pretty normal looking BMW grill <laughs> Exactly Even when it comes to the side profile, I really like the bumper divot that is there The small crease makes it look so sporty and so muscular from the side uh, And when it comes to the rear the rear bumper, the rear diffuser also looks very nice with the two slits that can actually hurt more on that later Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think so the wheels of both cars look actually pretty similar Like they have a very similar design kind of thing These are of course the M Sport wheels 
those are the normal GLA wheels although you can get the AMG ones but yeah overall I think so this looks like an SUV that doesn't so let's get on to the inside let's talk about what's going on on the inside of the GLA 220D yes it might look a little bit more outdated than the new X1 since that has just like launched this year yeah but it's still a very nice place to be in 10.25 inch screens two of them and MBUX is actually very intuitive very easy to use but uh, I mean personal opinion I don't like uh, I mean the that drive. that is pretty crap now <laughs> but I think so the outgoing X1 had a much easier uh, X drive system with like the scroller wheel mm. and all of that uh, this is still pretty complicated because you have a trackpad and all of that yeah. stuff. I mean, it's, it's, you, it's even in this you have to pay attention. In my opinion, I think if uh, you had to track your movement, this is easier to like just figure out where you're going through a couple of swipes than actually having to read and look in the eye drive. The only thing that I like about MBUX is that Mercedes has given controls on the on steering. On the steering, that's also very easy to that's use. That's easy to use, easier than the trackpad for sure. This place, I have one uh, problem with it. I just feel like these three vents in the middle just take the center stage. Uh, and it's, yeah. I mean, no, no doubt, they are very pretty uh, vents, but I would just want them to be less prominent if, if uh, that makes sense. It does make sense, but BMW has done some weird stuff. You just have two vents over here like that mm. in the X1. So. Yeah, I don't think these small SUV crossovers have any features like that so yeah. that they can fill it up with anything. Uh, to be honest, in terms of bells and whistles, you've got pretty much everything that the X1 would have, but it is a little bit more outdated since, I mean, you, you guys don't have uh, memory seats or memory settings for your passenger. The passenger, yes. The passenger of the GLA gets memory seats. But we don't have Apple CarPlay. Which is... Wireless. W wireless. Yeah. We don't have wireless Apple CarPlay in this car. Yeah. It doesn't even have all of the ADAS features that the X1 yes. has. Uh, so yeah, in, in some of the places, the X1 definitely takes the cake. But who anyways uses ADAS in India? And if you do, you'll probably get yourself killed. So don't do that. Yeah. So um, let's go and see how new is the new BMW X1. Yep. Let's check it out. Instantly, when you get into the X1, you can like feel and see that yeah, it's a much bigger car. Like even the headspace that you have, the way you sit, the space in the rear, it feels more like an SUV than the GLA for sure. Yeah, and they've really upped the game in terms of like fit and finish. You've got a uh, leather top dashboard. What's yeah. this called? What's this called? Leather dashboard. Yeah, you've got a leather dashboard. Even the M340i didn't get it, didn't Yeah, it? even an M340i. It's basically like that girl in 7th grade that you found really ugly and she had a massive glow up in massive a couple of... Massive glow up, bro. Yeah. Wow. And it's spacious. It's, it's like massive. genuinely very spacious. Yeah. And does some really cool things. It has Harman Kardon speakers. And I think so since this is more oriented towards the EV side of things now with the iX1 and stuff. I mean, this whole center console thing, it looks very iX, like the big yeah. BMW iX, looks like that. Like this cool center floating, whatever, what do you call this? Armrest? Armrest, Armrest with some controls. Uh, but the thing is, that comes with, that comes at an expense. You have basically no buttons in this car. Yeah, you literally have two buttons on the dashboard for your defoggers, your front and rear defoggers, yeah. literally, that's it. If you have to use the infotainment screen, you literally have to look at the screen and do it. It has no haptic feedback, nothing. It's just, it's just a nightmare to use on the move, unless you're the passenger. To be honest, it does look like a, like a phone the way the... Yeah, it looks set like up. a phone, yeah. Although you, you do have wireless Apple CarPlay in this, you have this yeah. massive uh, charger for that your phone in good. the middle, wireless charger, you have two USB Type-C ports and cubby holes are basically endless in this car. I mean, you can fit so many things in like the door pockets, you have yeah. a cubby hole here, which you, I mean, you can, you can put, you can put like a bag over here, like if you yeah. want it, that's how a big it is. bottle will fit. Steering and wheel is nice. Steering wheel is really nice. They've completely changed the BMW steering wheel now. Uh, so you have this three spoke design which looks a little bit more edgier than the last outgoing one uh, and yeah the steering wheel has gotten a little bit more like 
simple in yeah. my opinion like less buttons you know less things to do and so can you use buttons on the steering wheel to handle this uh, screen no. no so you basically are forced to look at the middle screen i mean you can do a couple of things using this right side steering button which has a little pop over here on this instrument cluster but it's not the same as the GLA and definitely the GLA's infotainment is much easier to use yeah. but i think so in terms of looks i think so the X1's interior takes the cake because oh yeah, it's new definitely but overall i think so the X1 has the better interior it's more spacious uh, of course it's more tech fested because yeah. we'll come to the features and all later while driving because it has quite a few gimmicks but I think so overall if you're a family guy looking for like a family car the X1 is definitely better. For the first time I think BMW has one up Mercedes in terms of space comfort features and space. Yeah. Wow. Let's take That's it for a amazing. drive. I want to see how it feels on a drive. Let's go. So the new X1 does feel like a breath of fresh air compared to the older generation this new platform actually is very plush i really enjoy the way the car rides but uh, there is one thing that i am not I, i can't get my head wrapped around is just how un bmw like this car is it's very subtle it doesn't have that ridiculous amount of feedback that you would expect from the bmws and yeah that sheer driving pleasure is a little bit of a question right now in my opinion i think so the outgoing x1 was a little bit more sporty in that sense this yeah. looks more sporty but it isn't and i think so that's because bmw is trying to shift its image uh in front of the audience basically so this is a little bit more calm and in fact even the engine while well, it's taken a little bit of a hit actually quite a big one so the old x1 got the same 2 liter four cylinder turbo diesel that used to make 190ish horsepower 188 190ish horsepower Respectful. and this with a new mild hybrid system i think so the same engine still a 2 liter turbo diesel uh it now makes 148 horsepower and 40 newton meters of torque less than the outgoing variant uh not that an x1 is supposed to be fast but i don't understand why the power drop 148 bhp yep so that is a little bit of a disappointment but i think so it's still uh, i mean it's okay to drive it's fun to drive if you want to drive it like that but again it's not meant to be like that you have a sports mode with like dsc off and all of that stuff but front wheel drive so i mean i don't know what you would do with it but it's actually a very weird thing because the GLA is actually the more sportier one this yeah. is the more comfortable one yeah in fact i was just about to mention that when it comes to suspension this is less taut in fact it's much more plushier than the GLA even the 220d so i was like I, which is again a role reversal yep. in terms of what bmw actually like to give their customers and what mercedes like to give their customers so it's very uncanny that it's like the roles are reversed again even when it comes to suspension and its plushiness the bmw should have been the more taut one yep and uh, the merc should have been the plushier one but it's actually the opposite and But, uh, i think that uh, even though the like horsepower might have gone down i don't think an x1 like client is anyways going to look at those numbers i exactly. think he's going to look at how refined it is and that is where actually the x1 takes a big w because the engine is more smooth the yeah, gearbox definitely. is more smooth the brakes are actually pretty powerful for yeah. a matter of fact this in fact is very impressive it's genuinely a very quiet diesel four port Yeah. Like for a, if, even for being a diesel four port, it's usually you would get a little bit of drone, some some sort of noise into the cabin. Nothing. I mean, it's It, a very impressive engine. Yeah. And uh, if like like I said, I don't care about the horsepower figures in this car. Although it's a little bit of a disappointment, but this mild hybrid system has actually brought in a couple of really cool features. First of all, is that boost button, pretty yeah. much a gimmick, but it's really really cool. Okay, can we try it? Yeah, can we try it in sport? in sport? I mean, it works without sport as well. Okay, but we'll just try and see. Hold the hold the minus and uh, stamp, stamp on, on the throttle. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, noticeable Slightly difference. Slightly noticeable, yes. Noticeable. It's like it's like the engine, um, the kick, that initial kick is just a bit more aggressive when it comes to on the roll. Yeah. The mild hybrid system has also allowed the X1 to get some ridiculous fuel economy numbers. On our way back to BMW service station in Navi Mumbai, we were able to extract a very impressive 32.9 kmpl from the X1. Basically, the fuel bar didn't even move and if you do the calculations, more or less we did a 100 km journey in only 3 liters of diesel. Massive panoramic sunroof. Yes. Ah, uh, that's in the GLA2. That's in the GLA2, but that's a split one whereas yeah. this is like one whole one whole massive thing. massive thing. So the X1 has a couple of modes as well. So you have digital art, you have relax, expressive, efficient, sport and personal. Personal of course being the customizable mode. You have expressive which you get some cool graphics on the console and over here your ambient lighting color changes, you your massaging seats automatically start. Yeah, it feels so good. Yeah, I... it has massaging seats which is pretty cool. And yeah, I think so it's a really really cool car in that sense. a uh, big step up from the old one so how about we get into the GLA and see how that feels sure let's go so now we're in the GLA 220d this is not the formatic this is the front wheel drive one and off the bat i can instantly say that it doesn't feel as spacious as the x1 it's very yeah we are i mean i, I don't want to say cramped but yeah it, yeah we're close to each other yeah we're close which i don't want to be <laughs> uh but in fact it's given uh, if you can omit the lack of uh, as much space as the x1 it's actually a very nice place to be there are cubby holes in the dashboard that can be covered so it's quite a seamless place and everything is like non distractive uh, except the front massive screen <laughs> that again we are going to be complaining about uh, but i agree it's less of a hassle to use than yeah. the X1 because you can use it via this trackpad here or the trackpad in the middle exactly but let's come to the driving because we've covered the uh, tech quite a bit and if you want to know more about the tech you can check out the GLA 220d formatic review that we've done basically the same car uh, but i agree with the thing that you said that the X1 is actually the more comfortable car the more plush luxurious feeling one rather than the mercedes uh the mercedes is suspension is pretty stiff like you can I feel mean, everything yes it is on the stiffer side however when you start pushing the car a lot uh it irons out bumps pretty well which would be a trait you would see in many bmws yes and not in a lot of mercs That's however good. this is very taut again as i said in the other uh, very nim uh, I wouldn't say nimble X1. but it's very direct it's more direct it's more sharp it's than sharper, the X1 yes it performs good in terms of agility in terms of dynamics yes. it's a very nice car uh and also talking about the engine it produces more power than, than the X1 than the X1 essentially maybe 15% more power with 188 bhp yeah. and 400 nm of torque but the funny thing is that uh, the GLA is supposed to get a refresh and today the day we're filming <laughs> yeah they basically announced It's that probably a new model of the GLA might be coming out uh, but let me tell you a couple of things that i find very annoying first is the gear selector i mean i don't know why mercedes keep a stock over here if you're coming from like a normal car this is actually pretty dangerous like yeah just, you can like just think of it like a turn signal or like a wiper thing and just flick it and yeah you are i mean it's not yeah. going to be uh, on the move it's not going to let you go into reverse or anything but it's still yeah it's going to be counterintuitive you're going to be trying to and uh, clean your only, windshield with that i don't like a couple of things apart from that uh, first of all this screen this instrument cluster i mean the graphics and all are fine but the lack of attention to detail is what gets me if you can see this over here this is an yeah, a class it's an a35 it's an a class, a -class whatever yeah. a35 a class and when you start the car like that welcome screen that you have it's it's a, a gls GLE. gle it's a gle so yeah. that's very stupid whereas in the x1 you have that live view yeah, thing everything is x1 
everything is X1 to your spec and I mean the detail is crazy like if you show an yeah. indicator it shows it if you turn yeah. the wheel it shows it if you're moving the wheels start moving yeah so some of these things here and there are very annoying mm -hmm. in this car like the other thing is if uh, the the X1 doesn't really let you know that you are driving the most accessible BMW ever it For sure. kind of gives you the entire shebang in terms of the experience this one gives you hints that it is the most accessible Merc ever like, and since the engine also when you talk about the engine's refinement itself in second third gear when you're pushing it a little hard you can hear that drone coming into the engine uh, into the cabin and even right now in like this stop and go traffic i mean so jerky yeah and yeah like the gearbox is well it's it's an it's not... hp dct yep uh in slow traffic yeah it's going to be a little okay but uh, not you, okay i mean it's pretty jerky it's a that. little jerky i mean you can see it yeah the low gears are a little but when you um actually push it yeah it does a decent it does a decent job but now we are, sure. i mean stuck in traffic yeah so it's a little jerky but that's a thing of dcts The BMW's interior build quality is rock solid. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. when you go over bumps and stuff, you can hear some creaks and rattles and all of that stuff. Whereas the BMW, none of that. And even in terms of quality, like uh, materials out here, yes, you still have a little bit of wood here and there, but then it's blent again with hard plastics, which doesn't give you that crazy experience that you would expect from a Merc. For sure. And yeah, I mean, you still get good touches like the piano finish in the middle of the dashboard, on top of the AC vents, and it is a nice place to be, but not as nice as the X1. For yeah, sure, agree. If compactness, dynamics, and performance is what matters to you, then the GLA. should be the option over the X1 it's more powerful the suspension performs nicer when it's being pushed and it is the smaller car but the X1 i think overall is the better one because in this segment if you're a family man you want more space you want lots of tech and you just want a car which is in general comfortable and that's very weird because this is a BMW which is actually more comfortable than a Mercedes the X1 has tons of space in uh the interior definitely more space than the GLA of course it's lacking a little bit in terms of the dynamic side of things but if you're someone who's looking for a premium crossover SUV i don't think dynamics is the first thing that you're looking at and that's quite funny cuz usually the verdict for a BMW is the performance is much better but the practicality is on the uh, lower priority scale but For the first time the roles are reversed. This is the performing car and that one is the plushy cushy car that can do pretty much everything uh, but not the performance side as good as this car which usually is not the case and I think we should switch places yep. cuz that is the role reverse. But this has just been announced to be getting a facelift and yep. this verdict might not stand the test of time. The only way we are going to figure out if The GLA stands to this verdict is if we get to experience the GLA facelift soon. And on that bombshell, it's a and on that bombshell, it's a goodbye from us. I'll see you guys in the next one. Do let us know what your thoughts on the GLA 220D is and on the brand new X1 is. That guy is Soham. He wears chashma and he looks kind of funny. My name is Bhavneet Vaswani. I stutter a lot and I talk a lot of bullshit. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, oh.